Have you ever wondered how a tornado forms? It's a fascinating process involving wind, heat, and a bit of atmospheric juggling. Welcome back to my channel. Today let's unravel this mystery together. A tornado's birth is a tale of two main characters, unstable air and wind shear. Unstable air is a bit like that friend who can't decide where to go for dinner. It's always changing its mind moving up and down in the atmosphere. Wind shear on the other hand is the change in wind speed or direction with height. These two elements are the perfect ingredients to stir up a weather cauldron. Their interaction sets the stage for a thunderstorm, the first act in our tornado tale. Imagine a warm, moist air mass near the ground topped by a cooler, drier air mass. The warm air being lighter rises into the cooler air creating a vertical motion known as an updraft. This updraft fuels the development of a thunderstorm. But a thunderstorm is just the opening act. Things really start to heat up when a supercell storm forms. This is a thunderstorm on steroids, with a strong rotating updraft known as a mesocyclone. Picture a spinning column of air, reaching up to 50,000 feet into the atmosphere. This rotation is the key to unlocking a tornado's birth. Inside the supercell, the mesocyclone's rotation and updraft create a vortex of air. This vortex begins to tighten and speed up and as it does it stretches vertically. If this vortex manages to touch down to the ground voila, a tornado is born. It's like the dance of the elements where wind, heat and atmospheric pressure come together in a twirling performance of nature's power. But remember not all dancers are created equal. Some tornadoes are small and brief, while others are large and long-lived tearing across the landscape with devastating force. So, a tornado is born out of a perfect storm of conditions, literally. But not all tornadoes are created equal. Stay tuned as we delve into the legends of tornadoes, their global hotspots and some fun facts. Let's turn back the hands of time and revisit two of the most devastating tornadoes in history. The Great Tri-State Tornado of 1925 was a beast like no other. It roared across three states, leaving a path of destruction 70 miles wide. Nearly 700 people lost their lives, making it the deadliest tornado in U.S. history. Fast forward to the 21st century. In 2011, Joplin, Missouri was hit by an EF-5 tornado, the highest rating on the enhanced Fujita scale. This tornado was not only deadly, claiming 158 lives, but it was also the costliest in U.S. history, causing nearly $3 billion in damage. The Joplin tornado was a grim reminder of the sheer power and destruction tornadoes can unleash. These events remind us of the raw power of nature, and why understanding tornadoes is so important. You might be wondering where in the world are tornadoes most likely to occur? Well buckle up. First stop is Tornado Alley, a notorious region in the United States. But the US isn't alone. Our northern neighbor Canada has its own Tornado Alley, mostly in the southern regions. Moving south, we find Argentina, where twisters love to dance in the pampas. And let's not forget Bangladesh, a hotspot for cyclonic twisters. These regions bear the brunt of nature's fury, but tornadoes can strike just about anywhere. Before we wrap up, here are a few fascinating and lesser-known facts about tornadoes. Did you know tornadoes can reach speeds up to 300 miles per hour? That's faster than a race car. Tornadoes can live a fleeting few seconds or as long as several hours. The record? An astounding three and a half hours, and they're not just a land thing. Tornadoes can whip up over water, becoming water spouts, so the next time you see a tornado on the news, you'll know a bit more about the science and history behind these incredible natural phenomena. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Comment down below what geography questions you'd like to see answered next. Thanks for watching.